Hey guys, it's Danny. Well, another month has passed and what do you know, it is time to recap the orchids we had in bloom in the month of May 2021. Look at that, half the year is gone. Time really flies, doesn't it? By the way, that's Maya, she's always with me and now she's taking a bath as always. Before that, let's look back at the previous month and see which orchid you guys voted best in show. And would you look at that? It is the Peri Rara Rapipoth Pink. I'm not surprised. You know why? Because I love it too. It truly is a very delicate orchid with a blush pink peachy color, very hard to resist. There is something about these subtle blooms, isn't it? Sometimes you don't want something flashy that will tire your eyes. Well, I can totally see why you guys voted for this one. But this month is going to be a very hard month because it is time for the Phalaenopsis, you guys. Mini Phalaenopsis, Maxi Phalaenopsis, there's no such thing, I just invented it. Everything, kinda almost, will be shown today. So prepare yourself for Phalaenopsis world domination. Get your wish list ready and let's see who you're gonna vote for this month. And P.S. Today, we are featuring bloom fails. You don't know what bloom fails are? Stick around till the end and you'll see. Yeah, I have some failed bloomings, if that's even possible. You'll see what I mean. And I'm also gonna tell you about a product that I absolutely adore that happens to relate to the Maxillaria tenifolia. So stick around till the end. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed the rest of the video, don't forget to give it a like, a share would be great. Let me know which orchid you liked best and hey, why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week. All right, so because things will tend to get kind of repetitive, I'm not going to present each and every orchid by itself. I'm just going to narrate and talk about general things when it comes to Phalaenopsis. As you can see, we started off with the miniature Phalaenopsis. And as I show you what orchids were in bloom and you have more information on the tag below, let me tell you what happened to the mini Phalaenopsis. Just in case you missed my previous notes in other videos, well, last year when I had my thrips infestation, there were a few orchids which handled it worse than others. And the Phalaenopsis generally, not only the minis, were the most affected ones. Now thrips tend to go for the softest of tissues, so brand new growth is on the menu. And at some point, after they were done with the flowers and the buds, they started to affect the crowns and particularly the new leaves that were starting to form because they probably were a lot more tender than anything on a Phalaenopsis. And many of my mini Phalaenopsis have crown issues. Many of them are okay, I managed to solve the issue. If you don't know how, I will link you below to my Pest Solutions 2021. Basically, you will see tinier leaves than normal and some growth, let's say, difficulties, which are very, very obvious. But some of my mini fells happen to lose their crown. I even have one that is producing a terminal spike. It's one that I really, really like, but hey, it's not the end of the world. I can definitely recoup this orchids and maybe I can get a cakey using some cakey paste from the, from the terminal spike one and that will make for a great video. Bottom line, my mini fells put on an amazing display considering what they've been through. They can definitely do better, but as I was saying, last year was very, very stressful for them. But no more, I'm going to take care of them properly. They live on a beautifully lit shelf. And now that I know how to more easily control thrips, I don't think I'm gonna have so many issues. So next year should be a lot better. P.S. Many of these orchids don't actually have a name. They might, but I don't know it. It's very hard to identify them. So some of them you'll see have the name No ID or Noid. Since I am buying my mini Phalaenopsis from my local flower shops, there isn't a dedicated name tag for them. So Sally, I don't have an ID for many of them, but if you were wondering, they're all purchased from the flower shop. Alright, let's depart a little bit the Phalaenopsis world, which is taking over my growth space and I don't mind at all, surprisingly enough. And let's look at the Neophonesia Fulcata Nishidemiyako. Now, you guys know I have quite a few Neophonesias, not all of them bloomed. This is the only one, I think, but I do have a few more hybrids of the Neophonesia which have bloomed or are in the process of growing some buds. 
So what can I say? I do not have the care down for this orchid. When it comes to blooming at least, when it comes to vegetative activities, everything is okay. But blooming wise, I'm not entirely sure what's up. Some of them seem to be easier to bloom than others. It might be an environment thing, but there's always next year, right? And plus, I really do like how they look like without flowers as well. Here is some sad news. I have a Sarcochylus that bloomed, yay, but also that died in the meantime. Oh. This is one that I purchased very recently. It came with a flower spike and buds, but it also arrived with a beginning of stem rot which developed more and more and in the end there was nothing I could do because the core of the orchid is very very tiny. So in the end I can tell you that it was a beautiful show, the flowers were sweet smelling, I loved it and I'm very sad I lost it. So probably I will look out for it and purchase it again because I really liked it but yeah sadly this orchid does not exist in my collection anymore. Right, the Yonosidium popcorn haruri. Oh boy, look at that show. You know why? This is amongst the first orchids which received slow release fertilizer last year. So it's been fertilized in this manner for more than a year or close to a year at least. Plus, of course, the MSU diluted fertilizer and ta-da, I really love the growth. Don't you agree? I think it's doing much, much better than before. And another tada, I just have to say it. The Phalaenopsis Sweet Girl Shining Girl is my favorite Phalaenopsis. You might be wondering, but why when you have the orange tangerine or you're gonna see another beautiful one later, why do you like this one? It's just yellow. Well, my friends, my favorite contrast of all is white and yellow. Why? I don't know. Recently I saw a fish which was yellow and white. It was a ram cichlid, which was my favorite fish, and I flipped and I need another aquarium for it. Why do I like this combination? I don't know, but I like it. Hence why. <laughs> I don't know why I made this tangent, but I felt like it. This orchid is my favorite Phalaenopsis. It has the sweetest yellow color, maybe that's why the name, and I absolutely love the little dot of white in the center. Together with the lip, which I don't care much about, but other than that, I really, really love it. I'm curious to see if it will get votes. I doubt it will because, as I was saying, I have quite the beautiful fowls this month. Uh, but yeah, this is my favorite, just so you know. And last, but definitely not least, here we have the Dendrobium unicum, which is a beautiful orange Dendrobium. It's the parent of the Stardust, 
which most of us have some issues growing or keeping alive due to the fact that it produces a ton of keikis and it gets exhausted, literally. But I think the species, which is the parent of that hybrid, doesn't do that. I don't see any excess keikis so far. I should have seen them. So I'm happy to have it. It needs a super urgent repotting because it's getting so dehydrated. It's one of those dendrobiums that needs a lot of water right now in the growing period. So I have to repot it straight away. But I have to say I loved the flowers. Very short lasting, at least for me, at least with this guy that I just purchased. But it was well worth it and I want to arrange a place for this orchid to maintain pendant because it's beautiful. All right, now for the failed blooms. Here we have two dendrobiums which are not in bloom. They used to be, they didn't last too long, but I didn't get to film them. First of all, dendrobium farmery, which had two beautiful and very long flower spikes, poof, all gone. And here we have the Dendrobium thursiflorum, which, thank goodness, I still have some flowers, I can give you some close-ups. What happened was these guys were outside where I kept them all winter long and then all of a sudden, like last week, the wildest wind of life just started to swipe my terrace. And together with that swiped, of course, the flowers as well, which looked horrible after a few hours of that wind. No point in filming anything because they looked horrible, but I do have footage from last year with the farmery. I can show you a comparison between the Thirsiflorum and the farmery when it comes to flowers. They are very, very similar, hence why they are sometimes being sold as each other, mislabeled practically. You can see they're similar, but also there is a big difference. The Thirsiflorum has an entirely yellow lip and oh boy, that contrast while the farmery has only a part of the lip yellow. There's also a difference in size. The farmery has bigger flowers. Other than that, I find they're both very, very similar and worth having, but different enough to have both of them, I guess. Sadly though, the wind thing happened and I wasn't on point with filming, but I guess there's always next year because these guys only bloom once a year. What to do? And the third fail is the Maxillaria tenifolia, which tried to bloom but failed. There's only one little flower which is still hanging on. But these flowers didn't even open completely. And this is because the orchid is dehydrating. It really, really, really hated something. It didn't like this setup quite at all. I need to do something about it. I need to repot it. It is quite dehydrated and it struggled throughout last year, which is weird because this is a very, very easy to care for orchid. So definitely I need to intervene and figure out what's wrong. Maybe I have some rotten things happening in the medium. We'll figure it out. But Sally, the flowering for this year is compromised. However, though, regarding the Maxillaria tenofolia, I have something super interesting to show you. I'm not sure if all of you will be interested, but hey, I gotta share it because I like it. Okay, so you know how I say that the Tenofolia to me does not smell like coconuts at all? It smells like peaches or something of the sorts and I never could understand why until a few days ago. So when I think of coconuts, what I imagine the fragrance to be is those coconut flakes that you find at the supermarket, you put on cakes. I don't know, here in Europe we find that. Do you guys have Bounty? Yeah, that chocolate has coconut chips or flakes and that's how, for me, coconuts smell. Mind you, I don't live in a place where coconuts grow naturally, so I don't really know much about coconuts. The Max 10 does not smell like that at all. It smells more fruity. And I realized that that's why I don't think it smells like coconuts when I used this particular polish. Yeah, you know me, I like polishes, but this is different. So I recently placed an order of some polishes and I got this one too. I adore milky polishes, they kind of go with anything. And when I received the package, I saw that this one was scented. Last time I used scented polish was 15 years ago. I don't even know, it wasn't that great. So I had to try it out. I put it on my nails and oh boy, Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It is the fourth day. My nails look pretty horrible at this point, but oh my gosh, it still smells like coconuts. This thing, <laughs> after it dries, like if you smell it in the bottle, no, it smells like acetone, but after it dries on the nail, even with a top coat, it smells like the most delicious coconut milk sorbet, as the name suggests, you have ever smelt. It is also very powerful. It's like you just used a hand cream that smells like coconuts 
I have never in my life experienced such a scented nail polish. Definitely I recommend this. I'm not affiliated with this brand or anything that has to do with nail polish. But this is Cuticula Nail Lacquer. I think it's Russian. I get my polishes from Nail Land, which I will link you to down below. If you think you're gonna enjoy this, I am sure you're gonna enjoy this. This smells like coconuts and it's amazing that after four days I can still detect a little bit of it. It's the strongest in the first few days, two days or so. It absolutely still smells. It is incredible. I really like this <laughs> nail polish. So I had to share it with you guys. What are you doing on the floor? Alrighty, so with that said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you have a great day. Don't forget to vote for your favorite orchid this month following the link down below and also leave me a comment telling me which one you liked best. Come on, let's do the outro. Don't leave me. Jo is not a fan of me, but she accepts me. <laughs> so again, thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well and I'll see you next time. Bye!